Hey everyone, Chris here with another episode of Five Cool Cards to Collect. Now, what I do for those that are new to my channel, I like to show five cards that obviously I believe are fun cards to collect, that are great cards to add to your collection. Now, I am a vintage card collector mostly, and I want to take a minute and talk about why I personally enjoy collecting vintage cards. For me, they are like a time capsule. They take you back to a certain time in sports history, and it really forces you to use your imagination a little bit. You, you think about being in that particular time period, being in that era, being at a certain kind of game or a certain place, and I really think it, it really gets your imagination flowing because what we have, we don't have a whole lot of film from that time period. And the film that we do have is usually black and white and grainy. So I really enjoy that aspect of it. For me, vintage cards are like a connection to history. Now, I have two football cards that I wanna to share today and then three baseball cards. The first football card, it's a team card. And this is a 1964 Topps Buffalo Bills team card. Now, a lot of people don't really like to collect team cards. I think they're fun. Now, for me personally, if I'm looking for a team card to collect, some of the things that I like to look for are, do they have a significant place in hobby history? Do, does the team have a significant place in sports history? Does the team have interesting players or interesting coaches? Um, these are just some of the things that, that I look for. And this particular card kind of checks off all of those boxes. First, this is the first Buffalo Bills team card that was ever produced. So I think that's pretty neat. Um, it is from their championship season. They won the AFL championship in 1964. And in fact, they actually won back-to-back -back championships in 1964 and 1965. Now, it, it was a great team, too. It, it was led by a great coach named Lou Saban, who he just kind of had a knack for spotting talent and getting the most out of that talent. Now, on offense, this team was led by Jack Kemp at quarterback. He had the great Cookie Gilchrist at running back, who I believe is long overdue for the Hall of Fame. At receiver, you had Elbert DeBinion, who is an often overlooked guy who for his career had 50 over 5200 yards receiving to go along with 35 touchdowns and the offensive line was anchored by Al Miller and Hall of Famer Billy Shaw. Now, as good as the offense was, it was the defense that really made this team special. And they were especially tough against the run in a time when um, offenses were really kind of wide open in the AFL. Now, they had an incredible front seven that consisted of Tom Sestak and Jim Dunaway at the tackles. You had Ron McDowell and Tom McDay, or I'm sorry, Tom Day at defensive end. And the linebackers were Mike Stratton, Harry Jacobs, and John Tracy. Now, several of these seven, I believe, should at least get consideration for the Hall of Fame. But unfortunately, they played in a time where they didn't really keep very, very good defensive statistics. So they're often overlooked for really how good they were. But I will say this, if, if you really want to know how good a player was, listen to what their peers said about them. Listen to the guys that played with them or played against them. And then you get a really good picture of how good some of these players really were. And now between 1964 and 1965, this Buffalo Bill team had a streak of 17 games where they did not allow a rushing touchdown. 17 games. Think about that for a minute. I feel pretty safe saying that that record will never be broken. So speaking of the Buffalo Bills, I did mention Tom Sestak a little bit. Uh, Sestak is one of those overlooked players. He had a really short career that spanned only seven seasons because of uh, knee injuries. But while he was playing, he was considered by many not only to be the best defensive tackle in the AFL, but many also considered him to be the best defensive tackle in all of football. And in fact, teammate Billy Shaw, who would go up against him in practice every day, really credits Sestak with helping him become a better player and, and really kind of helping him become a Hall of Fame football player. And in fact, once um, he was quoted, Billy Shaw was quoted about Tom Sestak saying, 
If you went up against Sestak every day in practice, you either got better or you ended up retiring. Now, I think this is just a beautiful, beautiful looking card. I love the color of the background and the way it, it looks with that Bills uniform. I love the, the team name up at the top with that font. I think it, it's perfect for this particular card. I like the pose as he's, he's down in that stance there. Just a great card. Now, unfortunately, Sestak passed away. I think he was 50 years old. He had just been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease and then a week later actually died of a heart attack. So even though he had a really short career of only seven seasons, to me, he's one of the all-time great defensive tackles, especially for guys that never get talked about. And I do believe he should get some consideration for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now on to the baseball cards. This first card is from, this is a recent pickup for me, it's from the 1961 Morel Meets set. Um, this card, for me, it, it just, it, it, it's a card that really speaks to me. I love the colors, I love the color of that, of uh, Tommy Davis's Dodgers uniform here. I love the pose. And I, I especially the thing that really spoke to me was the LA Coliseum in the background. It just, it looks incredible. And it, it's a card when I saw it, it just really spoke to me. And it also forces you to use your imagination. It takes you back to that time period where the Dodgers had only been in LA for a few years. They had moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. Their popularity was building out on the West Coast and they were getting a really good following. And I can only imagine what it was like to go to baseball games at the LA Coliseum watching the Dodgers play. They only played a few years in the LA Coliseum, but to me, again, I, I just love this card. I, I think it's a great card to add to your collection. I love having it. The next card I have is this 1953 Bowman card of Phil Rizzuto and Billy Martin. Again, this is one of those cards, if you really use your imagination, it takes you back to that time period, that golden age of baseball, the 1950s, and you have two great players, two great Yankee players from that time period. The Yankees have won the World Series in 1952 on a great catch by Billy Martin in the um, bottom of the seventh inning that helped save that game. And uh, Phil Rizzuto, obviously a Hall of Famer, one of the all-time great Yankee players. I just love this picture. It's just a picture where they look so happy. It looks like they're just happy to be Yankees. And in 1953, they would win the World Series. This was really at the height of the Yankees dynasty. They were just absolutely dominating baseball during this time period. And it, it really takes you back to that time where if you're a fan, you, you can just sort of imagine what it must have been like to, to go to a game at Yankee Stadium during this time. I can almost picture Mickey Mantle taking batting practice. I can picture Phil Rizzuto and Billy Martin taking ground balls and practicing turning the double play. I picture Casey Stengel in the dugout. Um, just I picture Allie Reynolds and, and Whitey Ford warming up and it, it just really gets your imagination going and I, I just this is one of my favorite cards in the 53 Bowman set because it really does speak to you and, and gets you thinking about that particular time period. Now the last card I'm going to show and share with you is a pre-war card this is from 1912. I've shown a couple of these before from the T202 set. And again, what I really like about these is you have the two end panels where you have the single players on the ends there. Just beautiful artwork there. And then you have the black and white photo from a game situation, or in this case, I guess it's probably prior to the game this was taken. Now, the two end panels, the players you have, you have uh, Peaches Graham on the right, and then on the left, you have Mordecai Three Finger Brown, who is a Hall of Famer. And he got that nickname from a childhood farm equipment accident where he lo lost 
most of his index finger on his right hand. And then soon after that accident, he actually fell down chasing a rabbit and broke the other fingers on his hand. And they never quite healed right. And um, what's interesting about this card too, they, they have write-ups on the back, which I think are great. And if you can see this for, for Brown, it also has his nickname as Miner. And he got that nickname because in the off season, he would work in the coal mines. So, you know, those were the days when players didn't get paid a whole lot and they had to have these jobs in the off season. Now, the middle photo is a photo of, a, of the $100,000 infield of the Philadelphia Athletics. This great group of players, they consisted of Stuffy McInnes at first base, who batted over 312 of his 19 seasons that he played, and he finished with a career batting average of 307. Now, I believe he should get consideration for the Hall of Fame. You have Jack Berry at shortstop, you have Hall of Famer Eddie Collins at second base, and Hall of Famer home run Baker at third base. Now, this group helped the Athletics win four World Series in a five-year span, winning the World Series in 1910, 1911, 1913, and 1914. To me, this is a great historical card that takes you back to a time period that I really can only imagine what it must have been like to see those baseball games. That's all I have today. I appreciate everyone that stopped by to watch. Take care, and we'll see you next time.